Okay, so let's make a context-free grammar for this language, which is 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 2 to the n, where n is at least 0, and notice the little bar upstairs, which indicates complement. So it's the set of all strings that are not in this set. So 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 2 to the n, any string that is not of that form is in this language. And what we want to do is we want to make a CFG for this. So how can we actually do that? Notice that the original language without the complement on it is not context-free, and so therefore there is no context-free grammar for it. So we got to exploit some properties of the original language in order to be able to make a context-free grammar for it. So let's consider what the strings look like. Well, every string in the original language has some zeros, ones, and twos, and it's the same number of each. So how can we actually make a grammar for them? So what do the strings in the complemented language look like? So all strings in this language are of the form, and there are going to be quite a few here. So if the string that we're considering has a one zero in it, it can't be of this form because it has zeros before one. So a uh, substring of zero, 1. I just realized while recording this video, I needed to say 1, 0 here, not zero, 1. That was my mistake. If it has a substring of 2, 1, because every string in the original language has 1s, then 2s, and this is in the wrong order. And then if it has a substring of 2, 0, and then those will all be strings in the complement language. So considering any string that is not one of these three, then it must be zeros, ones, and then twos, but it has the counts being wrong in some way. We have it of the form zero to the i, one to the j, two to the k. So it's some set of zeros, then ones, then twos, where either i is not equal to j, i is not equal to k, or j is not equal to k. And we will make a context-free grammar for this thing, and it's going to be a pain in the neck. So let's get started. So I realized while recording this that the grammar is absolutely massive, and what I want to do is to show you the context-free part, not how to generate the regular language part. So all three of these right here are regular. And you can easily make a DFA and therefore a context-free grammar for each of these three. What I want to show you is four. So here I'm going to just say that x1 generates all strings with 1, 0, x2 is all strings with uh, 2, 1, and x3 is all strings with 2, 0. And I invite you to actually work out the details of how that works, but I'm going to focus on x4 because that's the interesting part. I'm actually only going to focus on one part of it while I want you to work out the rest of the details, but it's almost identical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to make some space right here. So I have all strings of zeros, then ones, then twos, where i is not j, i is not k, or j is not k. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this. So x4 is going to make three variables, which is one for each of these three cases. So I'm going to have a y, which is going to say i not equal to j. That is the variable name corresponding to making strings where i is not equal to j. Or uh, I have i not equal to k. Or y uh, j not equal to k. And I'm only going to focus on that one, but all of the other ones are very, very similar. So let's focus on what i not equal to j is. Well, we should know when we're making a context-free grammar, anytime we see a not equal condition, we should always transform that into one is less than the other or the second is less than the first. So I'm going to have two more variables where I have y i less than j or y i bigger than j. So then now we've transformed this into two variables where it's a lot easier to figure out what to do. So let's focus on this one, i less than j. What does that mean? That means that the number of zeros is less than the number of ones, and I don't care about the twos. So that means that I can do something like this, generate the zeros and ones in equal order, like this, and then at some point later, I want to generate all of the twos, and also at least one more one. So I'm gonna have at least one more thing being made, I'm gonna call it z, so z is going to make 
uh, at least zero more ones, like this. So here, what I have is that z makes at least zero ones, and then y i less than j must make at least one one before it can actually make a string of terminals because the, the empty string is down here. And so therefore, y i less than j makes this original part of the string without the twos, but in order to get the twos, we can just stick a different variable right here. I'm going to call it b on both ends of right here. And then b is just going to spout off as many twos as it wants. So it's effectively what z does, but just for twos. And then how to handle this one is to have y i bigger than j. What it's going to make is uh, them an equal number, so i bigger than j instead right here. But then now I want to make at least one more zero. So here we made at least one more one. I want to make at least one more zero here. So zero, and then I'm going to make a different variable. Let's call it c. c is going to make at least zero more zeros. And so therefore y i bigger than j must make at least one more zero than one, which is exactly what we want. If you want to finish up all the work for these two, all that you need to do for this one is to ignore the ones and then make the zeros and twos an equal number. And then at some point later, namely in this part, you're going to recursively work on the ones. So notice that the zeros and twos are on the either end. You just make the zeros and twos an equal number eventually making more twos or more zeros depending on which one you're working on. And then in the middle, you call a different variable, namely z in this case, because it makes any number of ones that it wants. And then this one, you ignore the zeros and then do the exact same idea as right here, but with the ones and twos instead.